Hey friends, Greg here with the Pennywise guys. I want to do a comparison video of three different popular brands for HVAC mini splits. And uh, I'm going to give you the, the brutal honest truth of my experience with these different units. And if you are a homeowner and not a licensed contractor, you can install these systems yourself, but you'll need to hire a HVAC licensed contractor to go ahead and do the initialization of the charge. So they'll evacuate it and charge it for you and check the system out to make sure it's working properly. And then you use their license number on the warranty cards and you should be covered under warranty. So let me show the comparisons. Let's get started. All right, let me go ahead and uh, show you the first unit I'd like to review. This is a Pioneer 12,000 BTU compressor with a one single evaporator and uh, I installed this one a couple years ago. I've done a second one just recently and let me talk about my impressions and my opinions of this unit. Um, first of all it was fairly inexpensive. I got it on Amazon for a little over $800. Uh, I thought that was attractive so I figured I'd go ahead and give it a try. The stated warranty was up to a five-year warranty. Not too bad but decent and uh, I installed it, I evacuated it, charged it, ran it for about three four days and all the refrigerant was lost. It evacuated everything out of the system. I found out that the quarter inch line in the evap unit had created a wedge at the flaring and it started leaking and leaked it all very quickly. I took it apart and investigated it and found out that it was seamed copper. And seamed copper is hard, especially in quarter inch, is hard to flare without that splitting the flare at the seam. And what apparently I think they do is they use the cheaper copper and they anneal it at the end of the copper runs to do the flaring. And so I've had this happen uh, after this uh, experience that I would uh, uh, cut the tubing down to the right length that I needed, reflare it, and it would split at the seam. So you really can't use seamed copper and have it effectively last. And the example on this one was a perfect example. It lasted for three days and I lost all the refrigerant. It was about $100 worth of refrigerant that I had to replace. So I took out the quarter inch tubing put in the seamless copper, the, uh, the refrigeration copper, which is soft copper, and it flares up beautifully and it has been working great ever since. And so my uh, negative comment is not on the operation of the unit, but on the cheap tubing that they use. The one I just installed recently, they used the seamless copper, but the problem was they still used cheap flare fittings and I'll show you right now what happens when you use the cheaper fittings all right let me show you the differences between these two flaring nuts the one on the left was the factory nut the supporting shaft that supports the tubing on the top side of the uh, flare is only about an eighth of an inch that's just not enough to uh, support that tubing if it happens to be budged a little bit and that's what happened we're moving it just a little bit and that eighth of an inch of material on that shaft isn't enough support to keep it from cracking so I replaced it with the the nut on the right and it has about a quarter inch more of that supporting shaft of the uh, quarter inch copper tubing Therefore, uh, when I reflared it, flared up great, and it has support of about three eighths of an inch. So if you move the copper tubing just a little bit, it has um, enough support not to flex the tubing next to the flare where it will crack. That's a vulnerable spot, and it will crack if you flex it. If they use the nuts on the left, that's what happens. So I advise Pioneer to rethink their engineering on these nuts and use one that's longer in support of that tubing because that is hard not to move that tubing. You zip tie it together to secure all the lines after it's been 
uh, torqued down and, and um, evacuated and ready to charge and you can actually lose your refrigerant if it breaks during that process so I'd advise them to rethink that and to re-engineer this and change out those fittings. You can see that uh, there's a problem with the, uh, the, the, uh, the nuts and I needed to replace it to make it work on the last job even though they had the soft copper. Uh, they do operate fine, I have no complaint about that. The other complaint I have is that it's only got a charging port on the low pressure side. There is no high pressure port to be able to hook up both my gauges to check refrigerant levels. And being that I lost all the refrigerant out of this unit, the pre-charge was measured just what was right for the, for the system, but I lost it all. And so in order to get the right amount in, you have to weigh it. And that is kind of risky because if you've, you've um, cut the line, you change the length of the line, some systems I've added hundreds of feet of line. And so you can't go by the weight alone. You have to have pressure gauges telling you that you've got the proper charge. And being this unit only has the one charging port on the low pressure side, the only thing you could do is if you're experienced, and I've done it and it's worked well, you have to use temperature differentials. And that's more of a science, not a hard number of facts that you find on a gauge that you've got a good charge. And so those two things I would say are a negative. If they replace these nuts with an improved nut, I'd say that's a great improvement. And if you don't lose the charge, then as a homeowner, you know, you can get a good unit that will, will work for you. Um, the warranty claims that you have to be a licensed contractor to install the system. Uh, if you have a contractor that will sign off on it and check the measurements of the temperatures, that they ask for temperatures as well because they know that you can't take pressure readings, so you have, they go by the actual differential temperatures on the warranty form. And so if you have a licensed contractor that will check your system out, charge it for you after you've installed it, and go ahead and check those numbers and get the differentials on the application, then the warranty will be valid. And you have to use their contractor's license and have a contractor do that for you. Uh, let me go ahead and move on to the other uh, two systems that I have, and I'll make my recommendations at the end of which one is the best way to go. Okay. All right, the next uh, mini split unit I'm going to evaluate is the Cooper Hunter unit. This is a 12,000 BTU compressor with a inside evaporator unit. It works really, really well. The price was a little bit more than the uh, Pioneer one that I bought. This one is in the range of $850 to $900 for the system. Not too bad. The warranty was better. It's a five year on parts, seven year on compressor decent warranty. Let me go ahead and uh, discuss some of the issues I had with this one. This again, on uh, as, a, as a Pioneer unit, we had the seamed copper that gave us uh, a problem of losing our refrigerant twice because of the issues of the seamed copper lines. This one here, I found to have a seamed copper line as well. I cut the three foot off the lines and reflared it and the seam split on the quarter inch line and had a pie shaped wedge on the line. I couldn't have it uh, that way of course but so I decided to go ahead and replace the entire quarter inch line with the seamless soft refrigeration copper. I decided to go ahead and do that instead of trying to mess with this uh, quarter inch line. It was easier to do that so the cost to replace that line was about 40, 40 some dollars for the roll. I used partial roll, so maybe twenty dollars in materials. It was worth it to do that. And if I advise, if you're going to go ahead and cut a 16 foot line set and it has the seamed copper, I would go ahead and advise you to go ahead and uh, replace it with the seamless copper. The 3 8 copper has not been an issue, uh, and so even if it's seamed, it still has not been an issue. And so this one has worked well. I like the warranty on it. Uh, the, the temperatures are good. Uh, this one here has the two ports on the, uh, the high and low pressure, so you can go ahead and put your gauges on it to check for proper refrigerant levels. 
And so compared to the Pioneer that had just the only single port on the low pressure side, this one has both high and low. So this is a good unit. I do recommend them. Uh, I uh, would just advise you to go ahead and replace the quarter inch copper if it happens to be seam seamless since the Pioneer Company changed it to seamless copper even though the fittings were still not good. Um, these ones have good fittings. If, they, uh, by, if you look at it, you can see the seam on it. Just check the seam on the copper tubing and you can see that it's seamed or seamless. If it's got a seamed copper, I'd advise you to go ahead and change the quarter inch and then everything should be fine. Okay, let's go ahead and look at the next unit. All right, let's go ahead and uh, compare the next uh, mini split system. This is the Sun Bell. And uh, the Arrow brand is uh, a really good, high quality, top of the line for their series. They have the Lado series, which is the entry series. It has about the same warranty as the other two. But the Arrow series uh, has a seven year on parts and 10 year on compressor warranty. Very impressive warranty. This system has been put in uh, about four years ago. It's been working very well. Uh, we've had no complaints with it. I've had to do the warranty twice and let me discuss why I had to do that. I have two systems, each 36,000 BTU units. One has four 9,000 BTU inside EVAP units. The other has three 12,000 BTU units. So this does our entire home. It's been working wonderfully. I had a noise out of one of the uh, compressor pumps and it developed a noise. It wasn't doing anything other than just be a little noisy. So I videotaped that noise. I uh, emailed it to the, uh, the service uh, uh, from Sinville and they warranted it and they gave me a brand new pump and you see it on one of my videos me putting that pump in. And the new pump has been working wonderful. The other warranty issue, I had an inside unit, one of the seven, the fan motor developed a little bit of a noise. Again, I videotaped the noise, I emailed it to their warranty service center, and it had already been three years past. They used to have a warranty of three years, seven years, and so the inside unit was already out of warranty at that time. They sent me a, a free replacement fan. Even though it was out of warranty, they sent me a new one. Our series is a high quality. I don't know what they, in the way of copper, they use for the Lado series. But the RO series has a, a seamless soft copper. And this project, I used their original 16 foot line sets and added hundreds of feet more of soft refrigeration copper. Haven't had zero problems with the, with the copper lines. I recommend the RO series uh, Senville unit, highly recommend it. The Lado I haven't used yet and uh, it actually has a price point at around $800 compared to Pioneer at $850 and the Cooper Hunter closer to $900. So I imagine they may be using the a little bit cheaper copper on that and I'd just check it out and make sure that you, you know, before you use it, that you have good replacement copper if you need to. So I would highly recommend the Senville product. I have nothing but good experience with them. And uh, close second would be the Cooper Hunter, and lastly, the Pioneer. So I hope this comparison of the three different makes of mini split systems helps you decide which way to go. I pray that you are blessed, and that you know him who is the author of life.